Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing the Wilcoxon Sign Rank Test using Microsoft Excel. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in this worksheet fictitious data I'll be using in this example, and I'll be performing the Wilcoxon Signed Rank Test. And if we take a look at the data, we can see there's 20 participants, 20 records, and a pretest and a post-test. And let's assume that these scores came from an instrument that measures depression. So both of these variables are generated from the same instrument. The pretest score is collected before a counseling treatment is administered. And with the same participant, the post-test is administered after the counseling treatment is administered. So this is a within subjects design. With data arranged like this, and with the pretest and post-test format, oftentimes we'd be using a paired samples t-test in this situation. However, let's assume for this instance that we have violated the assumption of normality with the pretest or the post-test variable. So in this instance, we may choose to use the Wilcoxon signed rank test, which is a non-parametric alternative to the paired samples t-test. So to calculate the Wilcoxon signed rank test, I'm going to start with this variable sign. And here I simply want to calculate the sign of the difference between the pretest and the post-test. So if I take the pretest and I subtract the post-test, I want this variable to return the sign of that difference. So in this example, 31 minus 30 is 1. That's a positive number, so this would return a 1 because that's positive, not because the value is 1. So in this example here, 34 minus 31, that's 3. I'd want this to return a 1 because 3 is positive. So I'm going to start here with equal sign and then sign, the sign function, and take the pretest and subtract the post-test. So if I autofill this all the way down, I can see that all of the signs are positive except for record 1005 and record 1009. Those two values are negative because the pretest was lower than the post-test for those two records. Next I want to calculate the absolute value of the difference. This will be equal sign ABS for absolute value and again pretest minus post-test. I'll autofill this all the way down and now I have the absolute value of the difference. So there's no negative signs in this column. These are all absolute values. Next I want to calculate the signed rank. And before I calculate this, let's take a look at these absolute values. And we'll notice that we have a few ties. So there's more than one three in this column. And down here we have more than one two. So we want to make sure with this function that we use the rank.average, rank.avg function. So it's rank.avg. And we have two mandatory arguments here, number and reference, and one optional argument, which is order. And I'll be using all three arguments here. So the number is going to be cell E2. The reference is going to be all of the values in column E. So once I select all those, I'm going to press F4 to make this an absolute reference. So this reference will not change as I autofill down. Then a comma and then one. I want ascending as the selection here. And then asterisk and the sign. So I will multiply by 
the value here, which in this case is 1 for some of the records, for two of the records, it's negative 1. So you can see the signed rank for this first record is 2.5. I'm going to autofill this down. And I have all of the signed ranks now in this column. Next, I want to calculate the positive sum and the negative sum. The positive sum is the sum of all of the positive signed ranks. And the negative sum is the sum of all the negative signed ranks. So here I'm going to use the sum if function. So sum if the range is going to be all the values in column F. And again, after selecting that, I'm going to press F4 to make that an absolute reference. The criteria is going to be quotation mark greater than zero for this positive sum. So be greater than zero. Quotation mark greater than zero and then close quotation mark, comma, and the sum range. And that's going to be the same range, F2 through F21. And again, I'm going to make that an absolute reference by pressing F4. Hit enter, and I have a positive sum of 195. If I autofill down to this negative sum, just go in here to the formula bar, into the formula bar and change the greater than symbol to the less than symbol. So this is less than zero. So I have 195 and negative 15. Now I only want absolute values here. So this will be equal sign A, B, S and I2 and then autofill down and we have 195 and 15. Now, one of these is the test statistic used in the Wilcoxon sign rank test for these data. And it's going to be the lower of the two values after you take the absolute value. So using these two entries, we'll take the smaller of these two values. In this case, it's 15. So the test statistic is 15. Next, we need to know the critical value and the critical value is based on the sample size and the alpha that we want to use. Now an alpha of 5% or 0 0.05 is fairly common in the social sciences so I'm going to use that as my alpha and moving over to this critical values tab I have here critical values table for selected sample sizes and an alpha of 0 0.05 so I've moved down to the sample size I have here which is 20 then move over one. The critical value here is 52. Move back to the main worksheet and I'm just going to type in 52 for the critical value. So the null hypothesis in this case is that there's no difference between the pretest and the post-test. And with a Wilcoxon sign rank test, we reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic, in this case 15, is lower than, is less than, the critical value. So when the test statistic is less than the critical value, we would reject the null hypothesis. And in this case it is. 15 is less than 52. So we would reject the null hypothesis that there's no difference between the pretest and the post-test. And we would say there is a statistically significant difference between these two dependent variables, between pretest and post-test. I hope you found this video on performing the Wilcoxon sign rank test in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.